dear students uh, today we are going to discuss about uh, reaction turbines you know hydraulic hydraulic turbines you know hydraulic turbines can be classified uh, in the two one is the family of um, impulse turbines and the other is the family of uh, reaction turbines and uh, one major uh, <coughs> example or um, a, 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 a very popular uh, turbine that comes under impulse turbine is Pelton turbine which we have uh, dealt quite exhaustively Pelton turbine and under reaction turbine we have two type of machines one is uh, Francis turbine and other is the Kaplan turbine and other is the Kaplan turbine now we are going to deal with the Francis turbine in detail okay Francis turbine in detail so first we will explain the construction I will explain the construction and working of the Francis turbine for that you please look at uh, panel number one so this is available on page number 84 of the learning material already provided to you so you can see this picture basically <coughs> gives you an idea about or it is a layout of a hydroelectric power plant using Francis turbine you can see the major components of this power plant becomes the pen stock the volute casing of uh, this uh, Francis turbine then the guide vanes, the governing mechanisms, so runner and runner plates, and the drop tube. So while listening to this video lecture, uh, you should be very clear that this is basically an explanation of uh, the video, uh, explanation of uh, the learning materials I have already provided uh, to you. So this uh, this diagram is available on page number 84, and I would like all of you open my uh, my learning materials at the time you hear uh, to this particular video lecture okay so the components are the pen stock you know what is a pen stock so the pen stock it's basically a large pipeline which carries water from the dam to the powerhouse this is basically made out of concrete or some other uh, mm, cast iron or steel pipe uh, having large diameter which carries water from dam to the turbine or to the powerhouse and the volute casing you can see the volute casing is something that is very integral to the turbine itself you can see this diagram and on panel number two which gives the top view of uh, the francis turbine itself and uh, there is a front cross-sectional view of the francis turbine uh, just below that you can see this is what you call the volute casing this is the volute casing this is a spiral shaped chamber a passage for water and the penstock will come at this point the penstock the end of the penstock will come at this point and this is this water enters into the volute casing it circulates around the volute casing which is nothing but a spiral shaped passage and as the water circulates in the volute casing you can see that it enters the guide veins the guide veins is nothing but a series of uh, fixed veins that is fixed all around the periphery of the runner blades uh, which is situated inside the guide veins so the fixed veins and there is a runner veins so the runner veins is basically uh, uh, the element that rotates when the water travels through it so this is the top view of uh, the francis turbine and you can see the front cross-sectional view the water enters this is the point where the water enters or so this is the point where the water enters. it circulates around the volute casing you can see how the water uh, travels radially into the radially into that is towards a shaft and finally it escapes out of the turbine through a draft tube the draft tube is nothing but a pipe of gradually increasing cross-sectional area which directs water from the exit of the turbine to the tail race okay so you can also see the guide vein situated in the front cross-sectional view this is a guide vein and this is a guide vein so <coughs> guide veins are basically mm, um, the devices or basically plates uh, which are fixed which are generally fixed 
and this is used to um, um, adjust the amount of water as well as the as well as the angle of um, water that is entering uh, into the turbine okay so this there is a, a governing mechanism also the governing mechanism can adjust the guide vanes to affect a variation in water flow rate according to the changes in the loading of the turbine so there is runner and the runner blades which is which comes in the inner uh, part of this you can see that the force uh, for the motion of the runner is developed both due to the impulse and the reaction effects of the blade in which the pressure energy of the water is utilized and finally this is what you call the draft tube draft tube is a gradually expanding tube which is used and incorporated to discharge water from outlet of the turbine uh, to the tail race the draft tube permits a large and negative suction head in the runner so as to increase the power developed by the runner it is able to convert a large portion of the velocity available in the discharge water from the runner into useful pressure energy which enables water reaching the tail race to attain atmospheric pressure so this is uh, so it has got an hydraulic function to perform so the draft tube is not something that simply directs water from the exit of the turbine to tail race but it has got some additional hydraulic function which we will discuss later okay so now we will look at the principle of working um, of francis turbine so uh, you can see the francis turbine is basically a, a radial flow reaction turbine so the main difference of this turbine from the pelton turbine or any other impulse turbine is that the water is uh, getting diverted inside the turbine and this diversion takes place at right angle to the direction of entry as shown you can see the water enters radially into the turbine from the volute cases it travel radially into the turbine and from there it takes a 90 degree turn and comes out through the draft tube okay and this kind of diversion takes place at right angles to the direction of entry so this is a direction of entry and right angles to that means it water comes out it, it just makes a 90 degree turn and comes out of the draft tube so this diversion causes the runner of the turbine to spin around the water initially enters the volute of the turbine which is an annular uh, shaped channel surrounding the runner and it flows between the fixed guide vanes you can see the first water flows through the fixed guide vanes the guide vanes are provided to give the flowing water the optimal direction of the flow water with optimal direction of flow enters a runner and it flows radially along the moving vanes towards the center of the runner the guide vanes are so arranged on the casing that the pressure energy of the water is largely converted into rotary motion without any part of the energy being wasted in eddies and uh, other undesirable flows which may cause energy losses the guide vanes are usually adjustable so that the turbine has some degree of adapt adaptability to variations in the flow rate which is necessary to adjust the loading of the turbine which means these guide vanes are very helpful in governing the turbine and uh, i hope you remember what exactly is the concept of governing of a turbine sometimes uh, it is it is always especially these hydraulic turbines are coupled with electric generators and it becomes necessary to run the turbine at constant speed all the time because you see for an electric supply the frequency of alternating current has to be maintained all the time so which is uh, very much dependent on the speed of the turbine you cannot allow the turbine to operate at arbitrary speeds just because a lot of the turbine varies so you need to keep the speed of the turbine irrespective of the load of the turbine and that process that mechanism that helps you to control the speed of the turbine that helps to maintain the speed of the turbine always at constant rpm is what is called governing so the governing can be done by minimizing i mean adjusting the amount of the water going into the turbine as and when uh, the load changes on the turbine it means that suppose if the if the turbine is running at a constant speed and the load on the turbine falls if you do not adjust the amount of the water entering into the turbine the turbine will start rotating at a higher rpm which is not good and uh, the reverse can also happen suppose if the turbine is operating at a constant speed and suddenly the load on the turbine increases if you do not change the amount of water entering into the turbine the turbine will start operating at a lower rpm 
So these two cases are not advisable. So whenever the load on the turbine falls, it is natural for the turbine to operate at a to start operate at a higher speed. So this can be prevented by reducing the amount of watering enter into the turbine. And on the reverse side, when the load on the turbine increases, it is natural for the turbine to operate at a lower speed. So in that case, you can maintain, you can raise the speed to a fixed RPM by allowing more water into the turbine. So guide vanes is very useful for controlling the amount of water that enters into the turbine. So there is a servo mechanism based uh, governing system and uh, at the end of the servo, at the, I mean uh, the last part of the servo mechanism or the servo mechanism actually act actuates the guide vanes and thereby helps in the Francis turbine to maintain a constant speed throughout. So, uh, guide vanes in the Francis turbine are the elements that that are that control the water flow of the turbine as it is done by the nozzle and needle of the Pelton turbine. As you can see in case of Pelton turbine, the servo mechanism based governing system will operate this needle based or the need, uh, this, uh, this needle valve in the uh, that is fixed inside the nozzle of the Pelton turbine. So, water is discharged finally from the runner through the hole and hole or outlet from the center of the turbine. You can see the water travels like this and goes out into the tail race through a draft tube. So you must uh, notice that the Francis turbines have purely a radial flow runner. The flow can be either inward or it can be outward. In an inwardly flow reaction turbine, the water under pressure enters a runner from the guide vanes and flows towards the center of the turbine. So this is a classic example for an inward flow inward flow Francis turbine and alternately there can also be uh, <coughs> a system or a Francis turbine system where the water enters centrally and travels in radial direction before it is finally discharged out of the runner and such kind of Francis turbine are called outward flow reaction turbines. Okay. So the water head is uh, you can see in reaction turbine the water head is partly transferred into trans, uh, transformed into kinetic energy and the rest remains a pressure head during the water flow through the guide vanes. Difference of pressure on the runner vane is called the reaction pressure. The space or the channel between uh, the two moving um, uh, vanes act as a nozzle to convert pressure energy into kinetic energy during the water flow. Reaction pressure is responsible for the motion of the runner. In Francis turbine, the pressure at the inlet is more than that is available at the outlet. The water pressure reduces gradually from the inlet to the outlet and then it moves in a closed conduit between the two ways. The runner has to remain always full of water. The motion of runner is provided by the kinetic energy gained by the water while it flows through the guide vanes and the reaction pressure uh, is converted into kinetic energy when the water flows through the runner vanes. So water after passing through the runner vanes like I have explained earlier will be discharged into the tail race through a draft tube. So this is basically all about the working of. So we have discussed the construction of um, a power plant, hydroelectric power plant which utilizes a Francis turbine and also we have discussed the construction details of the Francis turbine um, in this uh, particular session. Okay, thank you.